We're leaving Ushuaia at the end of town. We're walking up away from the bay and the Beagle Passage into the Tierra de Fuego Mountains to find a glacier of which I cannot remember the name. Matiel or Maciel, depending on pronunciation. And uh, we're gonna go check this out. It's supposed to be pretty cool right now. Not so beautiful. Great-great-great-grandfather was a pirate. Yes. Pirate. <laughs> so you're a descendant from pirates. That is so cool. So we just met a fifth generation dude from Ushuaia, who's great-great-great, I'm not sure how many greats grandfather. But, oh no, it would be Spurgeon. Yeah, who came over here and landed here in Ushuaia as a pirate. And that's how come he's here. That is awesome. More to the point, that was the second time I've hitchhiked in my life. The first time being in Xinjiang, China. With a pirate. Yeah, I've got a good hitchhiking record. Now we've got to figure out, there's two routes up this thing. There's a river route, which I'm hearing a river that way. Yeah. And there's a, a mountain route. Mountain did you just go up? Which way, did you go the river or the straight up? Uh, we do both. So I was thinking we could, there's already a boot step up that snow line. It would be twice as easy for us since somebody's already kicked it in. Or we could fly the drone. You know, what do you think, Vivian? I wasn't that cooped up on the trip. up in the snow. to Antarctica for what we think is probably the ultimate test of toughness. Okay. Time to go down. We have reached the end of the glacier trail. We have done our shooting for the day and I'm calling them hungry and uh, and I'd like you to see where we're coming from. Oh no progresso. No progresso. Without any proper... Oh, it's faded out too bad. Everyday occurrence here in Argentina. So we've actually had two successful, well, somewhat successful, that's up for debate, hitchhiking attempts. We're trying to hit you right back down. We had, we think we've had a little bit of a miscommunication moment, which happens when you don't learn the local language. And these, this woman and a grandmother picked us up, drove us most of the way down, and then she just stopped outside this random spot and said something. And we went, okay. We presumed she was saying this is as far as I'm going. So we got out and then watched the car disappear in the direction we wanted to go. So, whether you call that a successful hitch ride, we got about, I don't know, three, two thirds of the way down. Hiring a car, so we can know how to film it. That's how you rent a car in a swell.
you see these? Yeah, mate. Okay, so this is really cool. This is a beech tree and it has this infestation. It looks like aliens have grown on it. These are beech oranges and guess who discovered them? The first person to discover this beech orange, which is a fungus, was Darwin. Darwin came up the Beagle Channel, stopped here, and they so astounded him, as they do me, that he wrote about them. And it was part of the puzzle that started him writing the theory of evolution. He thought these were so stand apart, so amazing from any other flora he'd ever seen. And it is, because this particular fungus has sat here for 180 million years evolving part of the Antarctica flora it's considered. It's super cool. One of the things that it does is eventually the holes will open up here on this thing. And when the holes open up, it will eject spores out and it will infect all the other trees. But the really cool thing about it is it's edible. It's considered a grape-like type of fruit. And around here they call it a fruit. It has 15% fermentable sugars in it. So some people will actually make an alcohol or wine out of it. But the indigenous people in the region, they would pick these and eat them all the time. So I'm eating this for you. It has a bit of a like a inside of a grape, but with not that sugary taste you'd get from farmed grapes. The outside literally tastes like a mushroom. And I like to put this as an asterisk at the bottom of this video. I just don't run around eating shit off of trees in the ground. Mmm, that's, that's really tough. Not hungry enough for that. Okay, it's time for my annual manual practice. Start. Forgot about the clutch already. Threw a spanner in the wrench here, didn't we? We went down a one-way street. Is it? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, map store. Good. Fucking out of there. All right. I'm, yeah, I know, mate. I'm not from here. <laughs> Great. To be fair, this does land on Eric's navigation. This particular snafu. It's got nothing to do with my shifting. <laughs> I was like, right, right, right. Oh. It's a one-way street. Well, I guess you're gonna have to reverse out of it. Yeah, with everybody watching. Get over here, uh, Argentina won a soccer game today. But interestingly enough, it was Buenos Aires v Buenos Aires. So, it was kind of, in my opinion, a win-win for whoever was going for Argentina or Buenos Aires, but people have taken sides, and it's, um, this is what South America's like after the win of a big soccer game. It's just going off. That's it, a little bread and a little sauce. Um, this is the first time I've, I've been given scissors for dinner. Some kind of gelatinous 
part of it. It's supposed to be good to eat. It's pretty good. I'm glad we did this. This is the first experience for me. And uh, it was, I would like to know actually what Viv feels about eating a giant spider. Because that's what these are. They're ocean spiders. Eric sure does have a way of like renaming things so that they're not appetizing. Like, crab's awesome, but ocean spider. Like, the main thing that actually put me off was when he showed me the crab getting boiled alive. I thought they would have just like bonked him on the head a bit. Killed him swiftly, but alas. He suffered greatly for my appetite tonight. So what this fungus does is the spores will get onto the bark of the tree and work their way in the bark. And they will upset the chemical balance in the tree and basically make the tree think it's wounded. And the tree will create this gall. And this gall is where these fungus live. And, and like all fungus, it doesn't do uh, uh, photosynthesis. It doesn't have any chloroplast. So it's surviving off of the tree, but it doesn't rot or kill the tree. This is like a hard rock here. Uh, the tree can exist just fine with this beach orange on it. 